Greetings, viewers. My name is ALP Mashangu. I'm a lecturer at Whitbank Campus. I am lecturing Mechano Techniques N6. So this is the textbook we are using here at home. We can all see it. So the publisher is True Bent. This is the book. This is the book. So today we're doing the lesson or the module called Balancing. We cannot run or we cannot have a shaft or a system in run without ensuring that the system is balanced. Like for instance, if we've got a shaft and we put the pulleys, the flywheel, the gears, we need to ensure that there, there is a bearing supporting that system. If, however, maybe there is an imbalance or out of balance of the system, that can cause the shaft to bend. And when the shaft is bending, there's a stress on the shaft. That can cause excessive wear and vibration on the bearing. So it's very crucial to ensure that the system of the shaft is balanced. Or it can cause the company a lot of loss in money and in time. So it's very important. So now how do we prevent or remedy that of the outbalance or the imbalance of the system? We need to place the balancing masses opposite to the original out-of-balance mass. So this is what it's all about in balancing, to introduce the balancing mass, and so is the position. In that said, I want us to do the activity or the exercise eight number two. Okay, exercise eight number two. So let's get the information. It's very crucial to have your data down. Ensure that you have all that is needed so you know what you're looking for or what to calculate. Let's read the question. They say four pulleys, A, B, C, and D, are mounted on a shaft. Due to carelessness in manufacture, the center of the mass of the pulleys do not lie on the shaft axis, but are displaced slightly from it as indicated by the following table. There's a table given to us here, so we're going to work according to the table. They said pulley A has got a mass of 500 kg, pulley B, 750 kg, C, 750 kg, D, 500 kg. And then the position is 7,5 millimeters, 6 millimeters, 6 millimeters, and 4,5 millimeters. That's a D for each plane. Okay, so now they gave us further more information. They said pulley B is 30 degrees to A in an anti-clockwise format. And pulley C is 90 degrees to A in an anti-clockwise format. So is pulley D is 150 to A in an anti-clockwise format. So I'm going to draw. They gave us in weight. I want to put in a diagram in a sketch on a space diagram. So this is just my skeleton space diagram. We'll assume this is our A. It's a plane A. They're saying plane B is 30 degrees to A in anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise is this for me. This way is clockwise. When we go this way, we go anti-clockwise. 30 to A, which means it's somewhere here. This is our 30. This one is B, they told us. And then they're saying C is 6 millimeters, 90 degrees to A, which means this. We're going anti-clockwise. It's going to be our C, plane C. Plane D, they're saying it's 4,5 millimeters at 150 from A. So from here, we're moving anti-clockwise. We're going to move upon something like here. From here to here is 150, which means this remaining must be 30, which is 180 degrees. From here to here is 150 degrees. Thank you. So now we need to, they gave us the space diagram. And we know, students, that space diagram, all the forces, they go away from the axis, which means this is our A, this is our B, this is our C, this is our D. Thank you very much. So now, from this given, we need to draw. We need to fill up our table because we cannot balance the system and get the position if this is not filled up. So they, they gave us the information. Mass A, 500. Mass B, 750. C, 750 D 500. They gave us their position. I will take it to meters. No. B C 
also is D is 0, 0,0045. You can also leave it on millimeter, it's up to a person. So I prefer taking back to normal to meters, then we take it from there. So this is the information given to us. Now we need to check here. We have got KGM or MR. This is a fourth column. So if you can see it's KGM, which means it's the KG and the meters. So we need to times this one times this one. What do we have? We put it down here. And then we come here. This one times this one. It's a KGM. Our masses and our position. They give us the value here. And then here also, the same thing. The same thing here also. So I've got the values there. 3,75. Four comma five, four comma five, and two comma two five. This is what we are given. So now, let's further move to the question. They're saying the shaft is carried in bearings at E and F, which means now they introduce the bearing to support the shaft. They said. So now, we don't know where it's E and F, but we know there's a bearing involved. So we'll get to it as we go along. Now they gave us the information. The pull is a place, there's a dimension or distance between pull, plane A and B, C, D, and A and E and A, E and F. So let's get the information. They're saying A, B, between plane A and B or pull A, pull B is 0, 0,6 meters. So I try to make a sketch here. So this is what? Between A and B, they say 0, 0,6 meters. Between A and C is 0, 0,9 meters. Between A and D, 1.5. And then they're saying again, between A and E is 0, 0,3. Now they're telling us where is position. 0, 0,3. And then again, they're saying A and F, this one, is what? It's 1,2 m. These are spacing of the pulleys and our bearing support system. This is what we have. So are we given the mass for the bearings? No. So we don't have anything here. Are we given the position? No. We don't have the position. So what is the, the first column for the, uh, for the bearing support? We just said here, this one is RE. This one is R, F. Just give it a name. So I know that as we move along, I'm going to draw a vector diagram. So there's no vector diagram without being scaled. So I create this column to save time, student. Because if you're going to scale somewhere and come and put it here, you might miss some of the values. So I put this column here. I'm going to scale them and put them here to make the job easy. Then now let's move on and fill up this before we do the calculation and the drawing. I'm going to scale this later. Now let's come to L. L represents the direction, or not the direction, but the dimension between A and E, A and B, up until to F. So let's check now. Before we do the dimension, we need to determine the reference. We must choose one, one of the unknown, and make it a reference. So by mere looking here, we have got E and F, when we come here, they are both our unknown. So we need to make one as a point of reference. I choose RE. You can choose RF. The answer will be the same. I choose RE. I said, RE, you are my point of reference. For me to be able to determine the length, I need a point of reference. How do we get the, 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 the values? Everything, if this is my reference, I'm going to close it. So everything to the left of my reference is, is negative. Every to the right is going to be plus. So now, let's come back here. We close E. A is to the left, which is going to be minus. Then we'll have here minus 0, 0,3 is in meters also. Then we come, we close here. Every to the right of E is our plus. We close here. What is B? We know that it's 0, 0,6. If we minus 0, 0,3, we'll have 0, 0,3 also here which is also plus 0, 0,3. Now, this is our reference. We're looking for C. If we close here, this must be omitted. 0, 0,9, if we minus Z, what will have? 0, 0,6 is a plus. 
No, I'm sorry. I put it wrong. This is our B, not our E. It must come here. Now we're looking for C. C is 0, 0,6. We're looking for F. If I close here, what is my F? It's 1,2 minus 0, 0,3, which is 0, 0,9. They're also plus because they're on the right of E. And then I'm short with what? With the D. What is my D? When I close here, as a point of reference, my D is going to be 1, 2. 1 plus 2 meters. But I won't mind a lot about this because I already mentioned here they're in meters. So I can omit this. Thank you. Now, let's look, student. We see we have got L here. We've got L here, L here, L here, L here. So now we need to determine here. You see this MRL is the couple when we introduce the L. So how do we get it? It's kgm times this will give us this one. So same as this one will give us this one. Here, this because our reference is going to be zero now. A point of reference, we take it as zero. So this is going to be zero now. Then how do we fill up this space? We want to say this one times this. I've got an answer for them to save time. It's negative 1,125. And then the next one, which is 0, it's going to be 0. Then the next one is 4,5 times 0, 0,3 is 1,35. Then the next one, which is our C, is 2,7. And the next one, you see, if RF I times by 0, 0,9, is 0, 0,9 RF. So this is going to be 0, 0,9 RF. Then I showed 2,25 times 1,25, which also give me 2,7. This is the information I have from the given data. This is my table. This is my space diagram. That is my also sketch for the dimensions of the pulley, so other bearings. So now, I need to sketch a, a graph based on the first column or the couple column. But I've got a problem. For me to draw, I can't draw KGM on a ruler. So it won't work. So I need to scale. So sometimes the examiner gives you a scale. Sometimes they don't give you a scale. You need to create your own scale. So I'm going to create my own scale. I see if I say 1 is to 1, it's going to be too small. And I'm saying, I think 20, 10 is to 1 would work for me. I don't, want, I don't want a bigger scale, just a reasonable scale. If I say I'm going to use... This is the scale I'm going to use. You need to, uh, to indicate to the examiner the scale you use. If you are not given a scale, they cannot assume your scale. You need to tell them, this is scale. So I'm saying I'll use, on the first uh, uh, sketch, I'll use 10 is to 1. Means I'll have here, I'll have here, this is in millimeters. Why? Because I need to sketch it there. So I know I also will need this. Let me somehow finish everything here before I go to draw and get the balancing mess and the position. So I look here, I've got 1,125. If I use 10 is to 1, still this will be too small. So I decide to use 20 is to 1. Again, you need to show. This is my scale for a couple column. So what do I have? If I use 20 is to 1, I've got 22,5. Don't forget there's a minus here. There's a reason why there's a minus. You don't lose it anywhere. You go with it. If you lose it, you lose everything. And then we've got zero. It stays zero. Because it's our point of reference. It's where everything is referred to. Then it's zero. And then we've got 1,35. It gives me 27. If I use the scale, I've got 2,5. It gives me 54. Even here, I'll have 54, definitely, because both of them are 2,7 then this remains our unknown value.
I've now fill up my space diagram. The block, this, this table is filled. The dimension sketch is filled. Now I need to check the question and answer accordingly. What is the question? Number A, the magnitude of the bearings reactions arising from the lack of balancing. They want to get, what is the RE and RF in Newton. When they say magnitude, they mean in Newton. Now you need to take two columns. Which one has got one unknown? The one with two unknown, we can't take it because we we'll have two unknowns. So we won't know how to, to draw our diagram. I check this as my column for force diagram. This is my column for couple diagram. When I look at this, I've got one, two, three, four. But I've got two unknown. For now, this won't work for me. I come here, I've got one, this already is out to zero, I've got two, three, four, and one unknown. Then we can work with this one and try to find at least one RF. When we are done, we can come and replace here and find the RE in magnitude with this Newton. Then how do we draw? We are given the direction from the space diagram. They are saying A is at zero, and then B is 30 to the A, C 90 to A, and then our D is 150 to A. So we start with number one, A. We'll, we've measured it is 22,5. The negative tells us that our direction is facing downwards. So I'll use this ruler to measure. They've got centimeter here. I will assume it's my millimeters because my scale is millimeters. Um, what do I have? 22.5. Thank you. Because it's 22.5, don't round it off and say, no, ma'am, I think it will, I won't be able to read well on the ruler. Because any slight variation, your answer will differ completely from the memo's answer. So ensure that you stick to what you have here. So I've got 22,5, and it's a downward force. Started from here up until here. Now, what follows is number B, which is what? 27. They're saying it's 30 degrees to A. This is the first quadrant. Second, third, four. So I can say it's only second quadrat, 30 degrees to the vertical. Then I come here. I normally tell my student just to make a construction line that you don't miss the mark. So I must have a straight line here, just smaller than a thing like this. This is my uh, a point of reference so I can draw. I know it's on the second quadrat and it's 30 degrees to the vertical. When I get here, Thirty degrees somewhere here. From here, this is thirty degrees. Now, what is the dimension? Is twenty-seven. So I need to count twenty-seven and draw it. The direction. This is my. A and this is my B. What follows? It's a bound notation. They follow each other. Our C is 54 millimeters. It's what? It's 90 degrees to the anticlockwise of A. So we get here. It's going to be a straight line. I will assume mine is fine. It's what? It's 54. Somewhere here. Must be straight. This is my C. And then my F is unknown. I leave it like that. So I move to D because it's given to me. I can draw it. My D is a third quadrat or 150 from A. It's up to you. 
Or you can say 30 degrees to the vertical. One of the three is the same angle. So I come here, I make my line just to be, not to miss my angle. This is, a, this is the first, second, third is here. Or 30 degrees to the vertical or 150, doesn't matter. So I come here. Degrees somewhere here. Then it's also 54. Then I must move 54 from here. So. so this also says it's a bound notation. Arrow follows each other. Then it's pulley A, pulley B, pulley C, and pull D. What are we shorting? F. So all the messages are there. Then how do you get this? We need to join them from where I started and to where I end. I join them. This long. I've got issue with the ruler, but I will improvise and see how far I go, just for you to get an idea. Then it's about the arrow follows one another. This is the arrow. Okay, then now they're looking for RF. How do we get RF? We measure from here up until here. Due to the limitation in my ruler, I'll lose what I have in my textbook, in my, in my answer, in my solution. I got 105. So from here up until here is 105 millimeters. So they also need what the angle also. The angle is the point where I've started and ended, which is this portion. This portion is my angle. What did I get here? I got 64 degrees. Are we together? But they are looking for Newton, not millimeters. So this is not complete. From here to there, I got 105 millimeters. And then I need to take it back to the scale. When I equate the scale, I get 5,25 kgm squared. This is the whole of this column. For me to get RF, I need to equate whatever I got 5,25 with this, which is going to be 0, 0,9 RF is equal to 5,25. What is our RF? I have the answer here. Our R is 5, 833. Three. Now this is kgm. It's not kgm squared. Nay, no. this our RF is the portion for here. Are we together? Now they're looking for RF. The formula says this is a formula. We're looking for this for RF. What is our MR? This is our MR. 5,8 Three three multiplied by we are given the speed which is three hundred and it's over sixty because it's per minute. What is our FRF? When you punch your color, you get five comma seven six kilo newton. Our angle is sixty four, but this is not the correct angle. We need to take the angle back to the space diagram. I told you the space diagram, they go away from the exist. We look at it, which means we must produce here. Are we seeing it? So it's going to be somewhere here. It's on the first quarter, somewhere here. This is 64. This obviously will be 26. Now what is the complete angle? From A 
we come here. This is our true angle for RF, which is 90, 90, 90, and 26. So our angle will be two, our angle will be 270 plus 26, which will give us 296 degrees to the anticlockwise of A. So this is our magnitude and direction for RF. We will continue next time and get the magnitude for RE. So what is crucial here is the direction. They will always give you something to start with because you cannot draw any of the vector diagram without direction. So they'll give you direction in word or they'll give you maybe in a sketch format. Then this is very crucial. You need to have this table. This follow, therefore you will draw. So you need also have a correct scale. You need, to, you need to go back and equate well. Because if you don't equate well, you will miss your scaling and you get it wrong. And don't confuse the scale. This scale is for here. This scale is for here. If you mix the two, you'll miss your answer and you lose your 70 marks. Coming up on, on the next lesson, we'll be dealing with the next question. They are looking for RA and its direction. They will continue then. I hope you will just take your time and go through and check it and check it. If you have any further question, please don't hesitate. Check us on our campus uh, Facebook page, WhatsApp, Instagram, and raise your question. I'll be, I'll be happy to assist you. Thank you for your time. Bye. -bye.